Liz, and today on Blitzday DIY, I'm going to be cloning my computer system's C drive, which is essentially also known as the boot drive, where all my programs, files, actual Windows install is stored, moving it from a smaller 128 solid state drive to a larger 250 gigabyte solid state drive. So the reason why I'm doing this is when I built my computer about a year ago, I wanted to have a solid state drive as a boot drive, so I chose an affordable yet reliable drive, which was actually happened to be a Samsung 850 Evo, which has a really good reputation, but I went with the 128 gigs because it was the most affordable option at the time. Now the prices have dropped a ton, so I'm actually st sticking with a Samsung drive, but I'm going to a 250 drive. So I'll have a little bit more breathing room as far as storage goes for the boot drive. So to clone a drive, you need to start with some software. Uh, there's a couple of different paid options, such as Acronis, there's also free options. What I'm going to be using today is Samsung's own software, which comes free with the drive on a disk. You can also download it off their website. And the way that the software works is essentially you can choose which disk connected to your system that you want to put on the new blank drive, and it'll just make a perfect clone of it. So after I clone my boot drive to the larger drive, I'm still going to be using the smaller drive because there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. The only reason I'm upgrading is because I just want a little bit more space. So I'm going to be using the smaller drive actually as a scratch disk for video editing, audio production, things like that, just so that I can get the speeds of a solid state drive. Because right now, everything else is running off of my three and a half inch form factor drive, which it's a Western Digital, so it's a very good drive, but the it just it's never going to match the speeds of a solid state. So for now, how I'm going to have the drive set up is I'm going to do a hot swap after the clone of the two solid state drives. And then for now, the 128 gig drive is actually going to live outside my system via a SATA to USB 3 cable, which is actually how we're also going to do the initial cloning because I'm actually going to be upgrading my system into a new case in about a month, and I will be doing a video on that. So now we're going to install the included Samsung software. For those interested, I'm using Open Broadcaster Studio to do the screen cap. I'm using the disk that came with the drive. Again, this can also be downloaded from Samsung's website. So we're opening it, clicking on Data Migration Software, and then click on the Execution File to start the installation. Everything for the installation was fairly automatic with just standard clicking Next, of course reading the terms and conditions, and then clicking Finish. Now, because I use the disk, I did have to run an update on the software, but I imagine that if you download it from Samsung, it will be up to date. After the update, I basically had to go through the steps for the install again, and then it was finished and the software finally launched. The software actually automatically found my boot drive and the new 250GB drive, even without having to initialize it through Windows. That is an important point. You plug the drive into the computer and then do nothing to it until you go into your migration software. The software will take care of initializing the drive. Then when you're ready, click start and a warning will pop up to make you a little bit more paranoid about messing with your data and then it's mission go. So the actual cloning of the system took a lot longer than I thought it would. For some reason, I was under the impression in my brain that it would only take about 15 minutes. I think because I was like, oh, it's two solid state drives, it'll be so fast. But it actually took about an hour and a half to two hours. So luckily, it is something you can kind of set and forget. You don't have to monitor it, and it's very automatic. But it's just something to keep in mind. Now, because of how long it takes, I thought I could give people some suggestions of things to do while this is going on. Stitch a tasteful sampler. Work on your chops with some piano technical exercises. Read the entire Game of Thrones series.
What I liked about the software is that it gave you a status bar, letting you know how far along the cloning process was, and also how much time was left. When it finishes up, you will hopefully get a message stating that the cloning was successful, and your computer should also see the drive. As you can see in the bottom right corner, Kaspersky is asking if I want to scan it, which I was very happy to see. When you hit close, the software will tell you to shut down and install the new disk, meaning to wire it up into your system. You don't have to do this right away though, as your original boot drive will still be intact. And because I actually did this very late at night, I just hit close and didn't do anything until the next morning. So as you can see, the original C drive is still there, and now an additional SSD, the G drive, is there too. Now after it finishes, you do have a perfect clone of your system that can either act as a new system to work off of, like how, what I'm doing, or you can kind of hide it away and keep as kind of an insurance policy for your system. Just for proof of concept, I did a test boot with the new drive to make sure everything was working properly, with the old drive now completely disconnected from the system. As you can see, I was very careful of how the new drive was hooked up, taking the utmost care to avoid static shock and damage. And sure enough, it worked, and my system automatically renamed it the C drive, recognizing it as the boot connected to the motherboard. And here, I hooked up the original boot drive to the USB cable to reformat it, or erase all the data so that I can use it as a media scratch disk. When you do this, all data is lost, so you'll want to be careful. That's why I did the test boot on the new drive first to make sure everything had indeed cloned properly. To get to the drive utility in Windows 10, you're going to go to this PC, Computer tab, and then Manage towards the center. You'll see I clicked around a bit to find it. I think they hide it on purpose. What you're looking at now is the drive utility window, which shows all of your connected drive's volumes with their exact size and also their status. Hopefully all of yours read as healthy. To format, you're going to click on the drive partition that you want to initialize, and then click Format. Here, you'll name the drive and select the file system type. I recommend NTFS, anything else, and you can run into some funky issues. Then click OK, and again it'll make you a bit paranoid and ask you if you're sure. And then afterwards, it'll be a clean and empty drive partition to fill up with data. So back in the Explorer window, you can see that now the original boot is empty and has a new name. And more importantly, the new boot is 100% functional. So this was the first time I cloned a system drive, and it was actually a lot easier than I thought. Whenever you're dealing with data, I think it's always a bit scary because you're like, oh my god, like what if I lose everything? So obviously you want to back up before you do this. But the whole process is very easy, it's very automatic, so I recommend it to anyone that just has been feeling like they just want a little bit more breathing room on their drive, or prices are coming down, storage options are going up, and I think that right now we're kind of really seeing growth in computer storage, and as far as the options, the space, the speed, etc., etc. So I really recommend it to anyone that's interested. Now to properly seat the new boot drive into the system. Okay everyone, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to let me know by liking down below. And if you didn't, also feel free to dislike that down there too. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, also right down there. I'll try to get back to you. And for now, hope you have a good one. This has been Blitz City DIY.